Hello everybody and welcome back into the kitchen here at Clean Valley Farms. I am JT Bear and today I'm having another go at making some candy. The goal here is to produce an edible candy out of pomegranates and some of that red hot sauce that I made. So let's get started. So basically I'm still using that same recipe I've been playing with so far. Two cups of sugar, three quarters of a cup of water, three quarters of a cup of light corn syrup, and this time I've got my red hot sauce and the contents of one recently opened pomegranate. Now I do want this to be pretty spicy so I'm putting in two teaspoons of that red hot sauce. Well, one and three quarters because I didn't really want to come out. We'll call that good, mix it through. Get that all mixed up in there. Shaky camera. All right, we'll get back in a second. And then now we wait while the temperature slowly rises. And again, we're going to pull this off at about the 275, 280 mark, kind of like we did last time. And hopefully avoid that burnt sugar that we got. The reason for that being, these are very thick bottomed pots. They have a tendency to really hold that heat and keep kind of building up after the fact. So that's what I did last time. That's what I'm doing this time. The recipe says to bring it up to 300 but it doesn't say anything about thick bottom pots. So, yeah, 275, 280. We'll get back to it then. So while I'm waiting for that to get to temperature, I'm going to use this handy thing here. You may recall this from that no sugar grape jelly video I did. But basically, it deseeds things, regardless of how tiny the seeds are, and juices them. There's been a lot of speculation as to uh, what this is. Could be, you know, a UFO, but... I don't really care, I'm just going to use this to juice it and bring it down to my bowl and get that ready for uh, adding to the candy in a little bit. So this is about how much juice I got from the seeds of an entire pomegranate. I'm just going to add that in here. Holy crow, things are overflowing. That's going to smoke up pretty bad. But I was waiting until just over 200 degrees to add that in. And here we go. I need to stir. Well now this is interesting, as you saw in the previous clip there, I've been having issues with this bubbling over the edge and overflowing, so I've got the two silicone spatulas in there right now. They seem to be breaking the bubbles up enough that I uh, can actually get some temperature raise here. Fantastic! Well, we're finally getting closer to that 275. This two rubber or silicone spatula trick definitely seems to be working for me. Pour that out in about five degrees or so. And based on some viewer advice, the pizza cutter is standing by. So the suggestion with the pizza cutter was that as this cools, I should just kind of run the pizza cutter down it so I can make more uniform pieces to hand out to friends and co-workers. That sort of seems to be a temperature where I can do that, so I'm gonna put the camera down, do that with my right hand. While that still isn't necessarily as neat as maybe I might like, it's sure a whole lot neater than uh, the candy cracked up last time. Now to let this cool the rest of the way, give it a break and see if this pizza cutter thing worked out. Using the pizza cutter on the candy seems to have kind of worked. For the most part, I have been able to separate fairly uniform little pieces aside from, you know, my awful cuts. If I had had a steadier hand, these would have been pretty uniform. And as it is, that's still way better than the last candy that went out. So the next stage is I'm just dumping them into a freezer bag with a bunch of sugar and shaking them up. And that gives everything a pretty nice even coat with the sugar. So shake away. I've got a lot more candy to go through here. And then i got to find some jars for it, I guess. And after a good shake in the bag and a bit of a tumble, in this handy coffee can. Here we have a look at some of the pieces of the candy. It did work for the most part, you know, I've got a lot of nice uniform bits in there, but where it was a little thinner it tended to just break up like the previous candy. But all in all, not bad and an excellent idea and just uh, kind of a good reason to make a double batch of candy next time. So they'll all cut better. Yeah. All that's left now is to try a bit of this little candy here that we've made. Gotta love an excuse for candy. And it's pretty good, I gotta say. 
maybe it was a good thing that I burned that first batch so bad. I'm super careful with it now. And these last two have worked out pretty good. So, yeah. The pomegranate. Non-existent in here. That little bit of juice was a terrible idea. I think I wasted a perfectly good pomegranate. The peppers are not terribly overbearing. Actually, they're not really overbearing at all. And having stopped at that lower temperature, I've got more of a, a soft candy. It's kind of sticking to my teeth a little bit more than I might like, but... If I stop yakking and just enjoy the candy, it won't be a problem. So, I guess I'm going to let you go and enjoy my candy. Thanks for sticking around, and uh, go have a little fun in the kitchen, folks. See ya.